Warren, we're here on the fifth floor. We were supposed to be outside on the balcony overlooking uh, pad 39A, but we have come indoors due to the weather. But uh, we are here with two titans of space. And though it might look uh, like this is a reunion of a 90s boy band, it is not. <laughs> we are socially distanced uh, for, for good reason. Um, but we are here to talk about space. And I want to thank you both and tell you both it's a privilege and honor to be with you today. Um, we're going to start off with you, Jim, and ask you a couple questions here. I want to, I want to ask you first of all. It's been almost three years that you were sworn in as NASA administrator, and you knew from the very first day that you would be right here at the Kennedy Space Center in this moment when a commercial partner was ready to launch. Tell me what it's like to be leading NASA at this very moment. So I, I want to be clear. Um, I did not know that when I got sworn in. Um, I, I will tell you, um, uh, a lot of folks said it couldn't be done. Um, but of course, uh, as soon as I got the job, Elon and I have had a number of conversations. Elon committed that, that this was something that SpaceX could achieve. Um, we've had challenges. We've had setbacks. Uh, we've seen catastrophic losses of capsules and challenges with parachutes. What's that? On the ground. On the ground, uncrewed. I want to be really clear. Yeah. Tests, but, but that's what's unique about SpaceX. SpaceX can do things that NASA historically has not done. They test, they fail, they fix, they fly, they test, they fail, they fix, they fly, until the point where we are today, where not only is SpaceX comfortable, but NASA is comfortable, we, we are ready to go. Um, but if you would have told me even two years ago we'd be right here, um, I might have even been questioning it then. Um, but this is, a, this is a monumental achievement. It's a Herculean task. Uh, by the SpaceX team, which we're very grateful for, and also by the NASA team um, that has been working hand in glove with them to get to this point. And it's good we have Jim and Elon both here to fact check each other, so that's good. <laughs> Thank you for that. Elon, in 2002, when you started SpaceX, um, many in the aerospace industry didn't take SpaceX seriously. You remember what that felt like. Yet here you are, you just sent two astronauts in a car made by your car company to launch pad 39A with uh, a spacecraft made by your space company. And now they're launching the International Space Station. So I'm wondering for you in this moment, do you just pinch yourself thinking, yes. is this really happening? Uh, this is a dream come true, I think for me and everyone at, at SpaceX. This is uh, not something that I ever thought would actually happen. So when starting SpaceX in 2002, I really did not think I would, this day would occur. I, I expected 90% chance we'd fail to even get to a low Earth orbit with a small rocket. So somebody told me in 2002 that I'd be standing here with the NASA administrator, meeting the astronauts, and the, the, we've got a rocket and spacecraft on pad 39A, the best pad in the world, uh, which is it's an honor to be there. I would have thought, man, I don't know what you're talking about. It's not. <laughs> like, like, no way. No way is that true. Uh, you know, and, and so it, it, it is. Today it's even a dream come true. I didn't even dream that this would come true. Let me put it that way. You know, uh, but it is, I, I am incredibly excited to be here um, on, on behalf of the SpaceX team. Um, and uh, as, as Jim said, I just, this really is the culmination of an, of an, of an incredible amount of work by the SpaceX team, uh, by, by NASA, and by a number of, of other partners in, in the process of making this happen. It's really, you can look at this as the results of, of, of 100,000 people, roughly, when you add up all suppliers and everyone, working incredibly hard to get to, to make this day happen. So it's uh, so it's hard, really hard to believe that this is real. And you're here, and yeah. it's amazing, and many of us have been amazed as we've watched you accomplish these things over the years. Uh, Jim, back to you, this is all about the commercialization of space. And so in the early going for commercial crew program, it wasn't something NASA was used to. Uh, you know, Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, shuttle, NASA gave the designs and the contractors went out there and built it. This is different. It is. They're, they're building it now. What were some of the hurdles that you had to overcome to get to this point? Well, I think getting people to recognize that when the government provides both the demand and the supply, um, you're limited in what you're able to do. Um, and of course, back when this program was initiated under uh, Charlie Bolden, General Charlie Bolden, astronaut Charlie Bolden, um, Congress was not, was not supportive. Um, and did not provide the proper funding. Um, and yet he, he, he persevered, he pushed forward. Um, and, and now I think everybody recognizes we have to commercialize space. We've had success now with commercial resupply of the International Space Station. Now we've got commercial 
crew to the International Space Station. Eventually, we need commercial space stations. So what we're using the International Space Station for right now, we're proving that we can compound uh, pharmaceuticals in a way that you cannot do on Earth. We're able to create immunizations in a way you cannot do on Earth. We're printing human organs in 3D. Right now, it's just tissue, but eventually, we're going to print human organs in 3D using adult stem cells, your skin cells, your own DNA. It's going to transform how we do medicine here on Earth. We're, we're creating advanced materials that you can only create in the microgravity of space, things like a, an, an artificial retina for the human eye. So if you have macular degeneration, you don't have to lose your eyesight. Bottom line is this, these markets are the future. And, and when, they, when they materialize, and they are materializing because of the work of NASA, we're going to see capital investment, not just into launch, but also into habitation. Um, and that ultimately is what's going to be transformational for commercial space. Very good. And Elon, in getting all of that going, the ISS and all the activity that takes place on board, it's key that this Crew Dragon operate on a regular basis. As the chief engineer, what were some of the biggest hurdles you had to overcome to get your spacecraft ready to fly this mission? Well, the, the, the spacecraft and the rocket have gone through literally thousands and thousands of tests and reviews, uh, both uh, by SpaceX, by NASA, by third parties. Uh, we've also, as Jim was alluding to, uh, we've, we've done a, a lot of flights. So uh, the, one, one of the things that I think that's very helpful about this flight, about, about what we're about to do, is that the rocket has flown many times. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, even in this, uh, essentially this configuration, it's flown about 20 times. So that, that means we've, we really have, and I don't want to tempt fate, but a, a well-proven rocket. Um, and we've, we've flown uh, Crew Dragon to the space station once, successfully brought it back. Um, we've done tremendous amount of testing on the ground. And when we do the testing on the ground, you always push the limits. So you want to try, you, you push it way beyond what you'd expect in flight. So sometimes you actually, you break it because you kind of want to break it on the ground during testing to see what the limits are. So. This is a result like, sort of, of thousands of tests, of thousands of design hours, and, and a tremendous number of smart people working um, incredibly hard to make this day happen. Um, and you've got two astronauts on board now. Yes. Do, do you feel that responsibility? Yes, absolutely. I've, I, I felt it, I think, most strongly when I saw their, their family just before coming here. And did you say anything? That you can share. So we've done everything we can to make sure your dad's come back okay. Thanks for sharing that with us. Jim, you had some words with uh, the astronauts. Uh, what was your take on how they were feeling? I, I will tell you, um, you know, Doug Hurley, uh, Marine Corps test pilot, of course, a veteran of multiple space shuttle missions, Bob Benkin, uh, flight test engineer, United States Air Force, again, veteran of multiple space shuttle missions. This is not new to these guys. Um, uh, you know, all I could do is convey to them how how much all of America appreciates what they're doing, um, that the entire world is watching, um, and just how grateful we are uh, as a nation. And um, I will tell you, their demeanor is loose. They are ready to go. They were they're joking around. The they're talking <laughs> talking they're really about good. what they have cool for guys. breakfast yeah. and how it might come up later. It was uh, <laughs> shaking eggs. Yeah, right, I saw that. Yeah. Right. So it was, uh, it was nice to see they are, they are in their element, and, and we are just so grateful and proud of them. Well, that's good to hear. That gives you great confidence, I'm sure, uh, in your positions as you, as you hear that. We're going to go to a social media question, and we've got uh, this question coming from Brooklyn. And she wants to know, I noticed some changes in the crew spacesuits. They look much thinner and lighter. What changes in the space capsule allow to have these futuristic suits? <laughs> Well, we spent a lot of time designing the, the spacesuit. I personally spent a lot of time uh, on the on the spacesuits. It took us uh, three, almost four years uh, to design suits that both look good and work well. Um, so you can see a, a spacesuit in the movie looks good, doesn't work. <laughs> and, and then you can make a spacesuit that works, but then doesn't, doesn't look good um, because fundamentally it's a pressure suit that's got to survive in vacuum. Right. So. Um, it's uh, you know, so it tends to puff up, you know, when, when it's under pressure, and, and it's got to withhold, it's got to handle all that pressure. So uh, it took us many iterations to, to get the get the suit to we really wanted to, to look great. Fundamentally, fundamentally, what it's about is like we we want to inspire kids to say that that one day they want to wear that uniform, they want to they want to wear that spacesuit. Mm -hmm. 
um, and get them fired up about, yeah, I want to be an astronaut, I want to be, I want to work on aerospace engineering, I want to advance space flight. And I think what, the, what today is about is, is reigniting the dream of space and getting, getting people fired up about the future and excited. It's just one of those things that I think everyone uh, of, of, you know, from all walks of life, from all parts of the political spectrum in the United States and elsewhere should be really excited that this is a thing that is made by humans for humans. And it, it, it's just a, a great, exciting, inspiring day. And it's one of those, like I said, one of those things that makes you glad to wake up in the morning. Yeah, yeah. You know? Functional and inspiring. And there's one on a model right over there. And I'm, you, you got me so excited. I might run over there and put that thing on, Elon. Yeah. <laughs> um, no. They're kind of custom tailored, by the way. So, oh, they are. So that you, I, I think you won't put in that one. But we could make one there <laughs> that you would put in. Well, I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, because I'm six foot eight. So I you yeah. have, to, have to do a lot of sewing. Well, the, and should the, 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 dragons, the, the Dragon spacecraft is, uh -huh. uh, can, take, can take someone who's six foot eight. My size? Yes. This commercial thing, I'm getting excited. Yes. Yeah. I'm ready to fly, Jim. Yeah. Sir, um, we've got another social media question we're going to ask. Ashton J wants to know, how do you think that launching astronauts on American soil for the first time since 2011 will revolutionize future missions? Yeah, so what we're doing here is unlike we've, with anything we've ever done before. We, we are not purchasing, owning, and operating the hardware. We are turning to commercial industry. We're, and, and going back to the spacesuits, it's the same for the capsule, it's the same for the rocket. We did not tell industry what to build. We gave them top level requirements. We said, here's the requirement for payload. Here's the requirement for safety. And then we let the innovators, commercial industry, American commercial industry innovate. And they came up with solutions that had never been dreamed of before. Um, and that's the success of this program. Um, so we're really revolutionizing how we do space flight. Um, and, and I really think when we look into the future, we're going to see these models of doing business with public-private partnerships apply not just to low Earth orbit, which is what we're doing today, but we're taking this model to the moon and even on to Mars. And I hear something about Tom Cruise shooting a movie up at the International Space Station, is I'll that right? I'll tell you what I told Elon just <laughs> yesterday, and that is this. Um, people ask me about Tom Cruise all the time now, and the answer is yes. We would love Tom Cruise to fly to the International Space Station and make a movie. I'm all for that, and we're going to do what we can to make that happen. Um, but you should know this. There was a day when I was in elementary school and I saw the movie Top Gun. And from that day, I knew that I was gonna be a Navy pilot. It's just the way it was. Um, the goal here, and this is what we're doing today. Exactly. And, and, and Elon is all about this. Get, 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 get the kids fired up about okay, wanting to wear that, that space suit, That's exactly. wanting to fly that, you know, get, go to orbit, go to the moon, go to Mars, reigniting the, like I said, reigniting the dream of space and just getting, you know, people of all walks of life, young and old, excited about the future, Excited! I think anyone who, who has within them the spirit of exploration should love what's going on today. And if we can Absolutely. get Tom Cruise to inspire an elementary kid to join the Navy and be a pilot, why can't we get Tom Cruise to inspire the next Elon Musk? That's what we need. We need a new generation of many Elon Musks, and that's what this launch is about today. I want to say, speaking of this inspiration piece, it's not by chance that we have the Secretary of Education of the United States of America here. This is all about the next generation. Um, if, if we have great success in our generation, it's not enough. It has to continue. The challenge with the Apollo program is that it ended. What we're doing now is sustainable, and that's why we have the public-private partnerships and commercial, um, commercial capabilities that are coming online. Very good. And the good news for Tom Cruise is he does a lot of his own stunts. Yeah. So in not, so in Absolutely. zero gravity, he should get hurt a lot. No, less, I, th right? I think it's going to be super cool. Yeah. You know, and, yeah, yeah. It, and as as Joe said, it's like this is going to. You know, you want to capture the public imagination, um, have them see cool, cool things happening in real orbit, you know, real space stations. Uh, it's like I think I'd want to watch that movie. <laughs> you know, yeah. And and it's like, it, or like I said, I think it was like this is like, just this is really just the beginning because we want to go from from low Earth orbit, we want to go back to the moon, not and the moon to stay, have a moon base like Moon Base Alpha, um, and, and and have a you know build a city on Mars and be a space bearing civilization out there among the stars. This is a super exciting future that I think it, that's the kind of thing where you, you're like, yeah, let, can't wait for it to happen, you know? If you can't get excited after listening to you guys, I'd say you need to have your pulse checked. Yeah. <laughs> Elon Musk, SpaceX CEO and Chief Engineer, thank you very much. Thank you. Jim Bridenstine, we appreciate you leading NASA in this time, Administrator for the Agency.